Um, my name is Carolyn McGee. I am an intuitive coach and teacher. Um, I am also a um, sacred haven living guide, and I'm so thrilled to be part of the wellness universe and part of this amazing book series. So I am reading my chapter from the wellness universe, a guide to complete self-care, 25 tools for goddesses. Um, my chapter is chapter 20. Own your battle goddess of compassion, using voice dialogue to tap into your divine feminine power. So my story. <sighs> what did I mess up this time? Was a pervasive thought that ran through my mind when something didn't go right in business or life. It flowed so quickly in and out of my consciousness that I wasn't aware of it half of the time. Even after I did a lot of self-development work, it still lurked in the background. I grew up ultra responsible and often took on obligations that weren't mine under the guise of being helpful, which did bring me joy. Unfortunately, there were emotional attachments to giving and receiving for my family and me. Nothing was ever free. I felt this underlying string of expectations when I received anything. I eventually realized I also had an expectation when giving. Perhaps it was that the person would love me or accept me if I did something. I got my validation and love externally by doing for others. Part of my external validation was not following my passion for helping others by going into healing or social work. I am blessed to have a highly logical and analytical brain. And I followed my family's encouragement to go to engineering school. I excelled and worked for 25 years plus in high-tech manufacturing. I was very successful but never fulfilled. I overdeveloped the masculine producing energy. The women I worked for were competitive or worked with were competitive instead of collaborative. And it was every person for themselves. Living and working in this energy reinforced that it's not safe to receive. There was always a condition to receiving any support. It was also not safe to be seen as feminine. Being nurturing, feminine or cooperative brought unwanted attention and sexual harassment. There was an accounting error in one company and my job level and pay rate were increased by mistake. A female or a male coworker found out about it and he started spreading the rumor that the only reason I could have been promoted was by sleeping with the boss. When I brought this to human resources, he was told it was an error, but not to apologize or tell people that he made a mistake. I got to keep the level and pay increase, but the cost of receiving them was my reputation. At another privately held company, the owner gave promotions for sex. He was not happy that I did not conform. When I was pregnant with my daughter, he came up behind me at the copy machine and trapped me by putting his hands on my very pregnant belly. He whispered, this could have been our child. It was during a recession and I had been unemployed for nine months when I started working there. I felt trapped in many ways. It was not safe to be feminine, a creator, or not to give in to masculine demands. This cycle of toxic masculinity and fear of my femininity continued for years. Along the way, I released myself from an unhealthy marriage and started working on myself. A piece of my journey was remembering how to communicate with animals and angels. As I allowed in the unconditional love of the animal kingdom and the divine world, 
I felt unrestricted love and acceptance for the first time. This allowed me to expand into unconditionally loving myself. I found myself drawn to the powerful goddess energies, but was fearful of their strength and presence. I wasn't present enough in my energy and body to accept the support of the strong, independent goddess energy. Meeting Alan Davidson, the creator of evolutionary mystic meditation, opened a new way of understanding my mind and body. For the first time, I could feel my energy aligned in my body. I felt magnetic and open to possibilities. Life seemed much richer, more fun, and easy. Opportunities flowed as I embraced being safe in my physical body and refined my intuition and connection to the divine. However, I still had that voice of ultra responsibility and what did I do wrong running in the background. Using voice dialogue along with the emotional freedom technique, EFT, or tapping, provided an opportunity to make friends with those unevolved voices running the show in the background of my life for years and decades. Voice dialogue is the recognition that we are made up of different thought patterns. Originally developed by Hal and Sidra Stone, this technique involves somebody moving across the room to a different chair to acknowledge their voices. Some examples are the voice of resistance, the voice of the inner critic, the voice of procrastination. We don't give credit to how powerful these pieces of ourselves are and the value they bring to our personality and spirit. Only by understanding these aspects of our humanness and the shadow self of those unevolved voices can we learn to love those aspects of ourselves and give them the opportunity to mature. Shifting into each voice and tapping with the energy of the voice allowed it to be heard and release the unhealthy hold that it had on me. I learned to honor and accept my inner critic, judge, saboteur, and not good enough. Making friends with fear so that she is seen and honored rather than stamped down had the counterintuitive effect of making me feel safer and allowing me to feel more energy in my body. The voice of what did I mess up this time no longer ran nonstop in the back of my mind. Working through all these aspects of myself, I became more intuitive, more connected, and more powerful. That overdeveloped sense of responsibility became balanced with boundaries to filter through what's mine and what isn't. Once these aspects of ourself are recognized, nurtured, and loved, we can step into the divine aspects of ourself. These divine parts are powerful to expand our awareness of the multitude of energies available to support us. We can all connect to the healer in Christ consciousness. We have the nurturing heart of the divine mother. We can connect to stillness, which is an aspect of the divine masculine. Once we understand this, we can expand our connection, healing, and energy. Learning to all, love all pieces of myself gave me the courage to open up to what Alan calls the battle goddess of compassion. She is a piece of us who is might for right. She is the part who advocates for those less fortunate. She is the aspect of us who volunteers time. She is the wise model and leader. She is the one who interjects and does not allow others to be put down. This fierce energy is unconditionally loving, yet accepts no bullshit. 
as I tapped with and embodied this voice, I stood more firmly in that which I believed, allowing anyone to cross a boundary of what I felt was good for me was out of the question. Tapping into this aspect of myself expanded my mind, intuitive connection, and energetic boundaries into a new dimension. I deeply understood that the word no is a complete sentence. And it felt natural to set a boundary because it's the right thing to do for me and those I love. It gives them an opportunity to step up and take responsibility for their own actions. Owning the battle goddess of compassion, the mama bear energy, by not allowing anyone to hurt my children or hurt those I love empowered me. My love is truly boundless. So I love everyone and stand for everyone. How can I stand by when those who I love are being hurt because they don't know how to receive or they don't know how to say no? This battle goddess of compassion is being you. It's understanding the energy of Wonder Woman, of Athena, Kuan Yin, Isis. These strong energies who nurture, loved, encouraged, and cared for those they love. When someone attacks them or tries to take away the divinity of their existence, this energy will not stand for that. The first defense is deflection. Pushing back those words, actions, and energies of not good enough. Didn't try hard enough. Don't have what it takes. Those are all lies. The second defense is standing ground by making a clear boundary. This is my belief. And you are accepted in your belief but do not try and force your beliefs or your way upon me. The third defense is that I will repel you from my energy, space, and people I love. You are not allowed to attack me or my loved ones with your unconsciousness. As you connect with and own your battle, goddess of compassion, you step into your divine feminine power. You become a powerful, charismatic, and caring advocate for love and connection. I am just going to take a sip of my coffee before we move into an exercise here. So the tool Voice dialogue was developed as a method for working with subpersonalities in the early 1970s by Hal and Sidra Stone. This methodology invites you to imagine a part of yourself is separate from yourself. The self would stay in one chair and the part or voice would physically move into another chair somewhere in the room. The facilitator would then speak to the part to understand the driving motivation behind the voice. Their insight gained by allowing this aspect of their self to have an independent voice was profound in its healing aspects. My mentor, Alan Davidson, created a methodology of shifting in your chair to move from one aspect of the self to another and added in emotional freedom technique or tapping to anchor in the energy of the voice. He invoked the energy of the controller who is the conductor of all of our voices by getting permission from the controller, whose main job is to keep the self safe and be the gatekeeper of which voices get to be heard. With this approach, the facilitator can communicate easily and clearly to understand the motivation and how young or old the energy is that has created that voice. These voices are often termed the voices in the basement. They are the immature aspects of our personality that unconsciously force us to make certain decisions. Learning to honor the energy that created these voices and keeps them strong is deeply healing. 
If you're not familiar with tapping, you can get information on my Wellness Universe profile, which is listed in the description. So step number one, we're going to connect with the controller. And through all of this, I am going to repeat a statement for each voice and invite you to tap with me and to have you mirror back by repeating that statement. So shift in your chair, just move your body, allow your hips to kind of go up and down. So you're changing the energy and put your feet on the ground if possible. So just move here. And we're going to shift into the voice of the controller. And you can use any tapping points that work for you. I am just going to use one. I am the controller. I am the voice that keeps the self safe. I control everything I can. I control the voices and what the self does. I have been with the self for as long as I can remember. I am on guard for the self 24 seven. I never get a break. I love the self. I am the controller. Now you may feel some energy moving. You may yawn, that's a sign of an energy release. You may burp, that's a sign of an energy release. Just allow the energy to move within your system and acknowledge that the controller is on guard 24 seven, never has a vacation, never gets a break. As the controller, you love the self so much that you're willing to do anything to keep the self safe. And now ask your controller these questions. Do you give permission to speak to some of the other voices? Will you provide a crystal clear channel to the other voices? And will you let me know if they don't feel safe? Step number two, be the voice of stillness. Stillness is beyond the beyond and infinite. It's that aspect of all knowingness without needing to do. It's the divine masculine presence. Shift in your chair by moving in that circular direction and ask to speak to stillness. I am stillness. I am beyond the body. I am beyond the heart. I am beyond the mind. I am beyond the will. I am beyond the self. I am beyond heaven. I am beyond time. I am the sound of silence. I am stillness. Just feel as your awareness extend, extends beyond your body and connects into infinite space and stillness. This is the stillness at the center of all being. Be the voice of the divine mother. This feminine aspect balances stillness with unconditional love for all. She is nurturing unconditional love. So again, shifting in your chair and ask to speak to the divine mother. I am the divine mother. I am the heartbeat of the earth. I am the creator of all life. I am the mother 
to all sentient beings. I love all my children unconditionally. I am infinite love. I am nurturing. I am healing. I am divine healing. I am the divine mother. And now allow this nurturing, unconditional love to fill your heart, to fill your heart, bringing healing and serenity into your entire being. Step number four, own the battle goddess of compassion energy. The battle goddess of compassion is the wonder woman who lives in all of us. This might for right energy unconditionally loves all sentient beings. She is kind and collaborative. And she recognizes the divinity in us all. When someone or something threatens one of her children, she takes out her sword of righteousness and goes to battle to protect. There is no offense, yet a fierce defense. So shifting in your chair and ask to speak to the battle goddess of compassion. I am the battle goddess of compassion. I am the divine mother and stillness. I am the divine feminine arising as the warrior priestess. I am might for right. I am fierce in my loving. I seek out ignorance and offer connection. I transform cruelty and suffering into healing. I am love in action. I am in service to all. I am self-compassion. I am strength and stamina. I am light and wisdom. I am the battle goddess of compassion. And again, just allow any energy that comes up moving through you. It just means that your body is integrating the shift in awareness. So invite this fierce and unconditional loving energy to help you heal any voices that are holding you back. Ask for balance with the divine feminine and divine masculine energy. Notice how you are enlightened fully embodied, caring, and aware. There's no need to act, yet you respond or defend as needed. Step number five, be your centered self. The centered self integrates all the voices with ease and grace. You can access stillness, the divine mother and the battle goddess of compassion as the center itself. You live authentically and connecting to all. So shift in your chair and ask to speak to the centered self. I invite you to journal your new feelings and understanding. I'd love to hear what op awareness opened up for you. I have a recording on my website of the tapping to help you connect in deeper and easier to the different voices. You can download that and my other gifts on my wellness universe profile, which is listed um, along with some other ways to connect in with me. And I love to connect on social media. Um, I love to answer questions. So I will come back and check to see if there are any comments um, on this video or feel free to message me on my Wellness Universe profile. 
um, I would love to connect. So thank you all for joining me. Um, I, my heart is full connecting with you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now.